you're going up, but it's rolling. It's not a steep up, meaning you can rock and roll. Oh man, folks. Oh boy, the weather has turned. I knew it was going to turn, but not this dramatically. Usually uh, the weather, it feels like, you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm in Seattle right now, just very overcast and humid and like, I don't know, it just feels like it's about to rain. So I've got another mountain test today, little fitness test up in the mountains. And so we'll just see what we can pull off uh, with this weather change. Obviously I just gotta, usually the thunderstorms and lightning don't hit until 1 p.m. But I'm also actually a little concerned about getting chilly on top of the mountain because I was going to go, you know, very streamlined today. Basically wear the, uh, the same amount of clothing that I'm going to wear on race day to mimic race day uh, in about a week. Actually, when you're watching this, we're seven days out. So we shall see. Uh, either way, we're going to make hay and let's rock and roll. Okay, good news. We might be dealing with fog. We'll sh that's what the radio just said. Hopefully this is just fog and maybe it's going to burn off and we're not going to be dealing with thunderstorms at 11 a.m. Well, would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Blue skies up here in the Rockies. Oh, I was a little worried down below, but it looks like it cleared up here in the high country. This is good news. All right, mountain fitness test. Let's do this. Oh yeah. All right, here we, here we are. Oh, the mountain fitness test. So what is the goal? What are the goals for today's run? basically three goals maybe four but three especially uh, number one I want to see how my legs are reacting to the taper so are, are my legs starting to freshen up number two uh, I want to see how my legs perform at higher speeds above 10,000 feet meaning is my like I think I'm pretty confident my breathing is gonna be there but I want to see are my legs uh, ready for the turnover because for the Pikes Peak Ascent from mile four to mile, let's call it eight to nine. So there's a four to five mile section in the race where it's rolling. You're going up, but it's rolling. It's not a steep up, meaning you can rock and roll. And there's a couple places where if you wanna drop, like my goal is to drop it down to about six minute pace. Like there are some spots that are legitimately flat, if not even a couple spots that are actually a little downhill. So I wanna make sure my leg turnover is ready to rock and roll. So that's goal number two for today's run at Grace Peak. And number three is the suppleness of my ankles, AKA I wanna see, are my ankles ready to spring up the mountain and float me up the mountain. Remember, float it, don't fight it, uh, the mountain. So are my, yeah, are my ankles ready to spring me up the mountain? Because I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of work here in this training block and uh, the weighted vest, the last time I wore it was right here at this mountain. So obviously no weighted vest today. And I, I, did, I just excited to see, are the lower legs ready to spring me up the mountain? So that is the goal. Um, and okay, yeah, remember goal, four goals today. The other goal is to streamline the equipment. Oh, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, YouTube family. I'm not gonna film today. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No GoPro, no, no vest, no gimbal, definitely no drone, uh, just the gear that I'm planning to wear for the Pikes Peak Ascent, mimicking race day. So uh, I'm actually, oh yeah. And another update on streamlining the equipment. I'm not going to wear my green hat today or at the Pikes Peak Ascent because, uh, because of temperature control. It just, I'm realizing my head 
it, it warms up a little too much when I'm wearing the hat, especially at higher speeds. So no green hat at the Pikes Peak Ascent. All right, I'm just gonna clean my glasses off. Uh, I'm gonna wear my sweat headband in the race. I'm actually ordering another one that's a little thinner. Um, just to, I just don't need something this thick. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm not gonna tell you the time from today's ascent of Grace Peak. If you wanna go digging, you can go figure it out. It's all about that mental state, all right? I don't wanna, it's I stay humble, stay hungry. Stay humble, stay hungry. So I'm not even gonna go there, but um, let's just say the breathing above 13,000 was special. It was pretty special up there. So, okay, we're gonna dive into the freshness scale, and that's right, freshness is gonna be the key word, but before that, back in the studio, you know where I'm off to. See you there. Everybody, what a day, holy smokes. Okay, the afternoon got a little crazy at the Demore household. So uh, I was planning to do quite a bit more filming this afternoon, that did not happen. Just got, just a lot going on, a lot going on. So therefore, just so you know, I don't like to have a talking head on the camera for five minutes, 10 minutes straight. So I'm gonna do my best to pull some old Grays Peak, and that's the mountain I ran today, Grays Peak, pull some old footage uh, from all the times I've run Grays Peak because just to spice up the vlog a little bit since I was unable to film for you the rest of the afternoon, I just like to make these vlogs as interesting and entertaining as possible for all of you. And now let's dive into the freshness, and yes, freshness keyword once again, the freshness scale for runners, three questions that I ask myself to make sure I'm walking that line, just like Johnny Cash uh, said. Remember, I always say, I want to arrive at a starting line as fit as possible and as fresh as possible. And in this training block, oh my goodness, eight weeks ago, no, seven weeks ago, I started the block after the injury. Um, I had, to, I knew if I wanted to reach a couple goals that I have for Pikes Peak, I knew that I needed to take some calculated risks. And as runners, I'm not afraid to take risks. That's the only reason I was able to walk onto the CU cross country team or the only reason I, I'm crazy enough to try and qualify for the Olympic trials in the marathon. So I'm taking some calculated risks, even today's run, like we're only eight days, let's see, when I did the run, well, nine days out from Pikes Peak and I did a pretty hard effort today calculated risks walking the line and yes today's run was 13 miles or 21k 13 miles round trip so six and a half miles up six and a half miles back down uh 4400 feet of vertical gain and loss or i think it's like just over 1300 meters of gain and loss today uh so a cow you know it's, it's a good chunk of mileage good chunk of vertical uh nine days out from the race all right so calculated calculated but it was in the solomon s lab sent six sgs this is the 2018 iteration i'm saving my 2000 the sent sevens uh for race day i'm not i don't want to beat them up too much before the race day so i took these guys out uh and they did well i think these shoes they must be close to 100 miles i'll put it on the screen right now but they have served me very very well thank you solomon for making a good shoe in this scent six all right and let's dive into the freshness scale something that i've it's very simple really something that i've created though for myself especially at the end of training blocks it's simply it's very simple everyone this is nothing earth shattering it's simply a one to ten scale but 
here it is. So you know how I like to do a three week taper leading into a peak race. So I was at 100 miles a week in this training block. I went down to 85 and then 55. And then next week before the race, I'll probably run 30, 20 to 30 miles approximately. Um, so along that journey on the taper, I like to be very conscientious, write down how my legs are feeling each day, especially the last like, okay, so if it's three weeks, that's 21 days, but especially the last, let's say 12 days and under, and that's where we're at now, I monitor how my legs are feeling. And at the beginning of today's run, I knew that I needed to go fast. That was the goal for today, work on that turnover at elevation. And so the first three to five minutes, my legs were not really happy with me. And I was thinking to myself, oh boy, maybe on my one to 10 freshness scale, I might be at a two or three. But then after five minutes and especially by 10 minutes, uh, my legs started to wake up and they started to wake up and they started feeling better and better and better. And so by mile, uh, let's say mile three, I was just mentally thinking to my, and this is the key, uh, as you're running to figure out where your legs are at on the freshness scale. And it takes time to develop this uh, no knowledge of your own body and especially your own legs, where your legs are falling on that scale. By mile three, I was I was locked in and dialed in. Okay, my legs, they feel like they're at a five out of 10. What does that mean for the rest of the taper? My goal over the next eight days is to add a point every day. So tomorrow, at the end of tomorrow, so sat, when you're watching this on Saturday, on Saturday night, I want my legs to feel like a six. On Sunday, a seven. On Monday, an eight nine and then wednesday would be a 10 and then two days to go before the peak race so i'm actually okay with feeling like a five i wasn't sure how the legs would feel especially after after the vest run a couple days ago um you know where i had 20 pounds on my back and yeah of course i'm going to be a little extra tired from that but that is my freshness scale and that's what happened on today's run and now i want to help all of you figure out and dial in to your training block to your tapering to your peak race and just at least plant seeds. Okay, maybe in your next training block, the last 12 days, you can ask these three questions to, you, to yourself uh, to make sure you're walking that line well between fitness and freshness so you arrive on that starting line ready to rock and roll. Okay, question number one. How do your legs feel on an easy day run in the last 12 days before a peak race? Ideally, you do not want to feel, your legs should not be feeling really dead the last 12 days before a peak race on an easy day, okay? On your recovery days, especially at the end. Like you don't want to end, whether your easy day is three miles, whether it's six miles, whatever your easy day is, you don't want to be arriving back to your house or your school or wherever you're ending your run and being like, oh boy, I don't feel like I'm recovering at all. That is not a good, that's not a good sign. Okay, so that's question number one to ask yourself, uh, for freshness, where are you falling on that scale? Question number two, how do your legs feel when you are getting out of bed in the morning, okay? I know personally when I am at the more like, let's say the 60% mark of a training block, meaning I have 40% to go, usually when I'm getting out of bed, when my volume is high and the intensity of the, of the workouts is starting to increase, I feel like an old man. I feel like an old man. And I know I do not want to feel like that the last 12 days of a training block. So that's question number two. How do you feel getting out of bed? How do your legs feel? In fact, frankly, the last, now that I'm thinking about it, my legs are feeling pretty darn good uh, getting out of bed. Like I'm not hobbling around like I need a cane. So this is a good sign. And question number three, how do your legs feel when you do strides uh, in the last 12 days. So I always recommend at least twice a week doing four strides, preferably like 110, 120 meters. So find a track or find a grass soccer field is even better. And you, it's not a sprint, it's not an all out sprint, it's just a stride to get that turnover going and to make sure your legs are, are moving well. Um, how do your legs feel in those strides? Do they have pop or do they feel like you're carrying cement in your shoes, okay? 
If you feel like you have cement in your shoes, you might want to back off your volume even more the last 12 days of the training block, or even you might need to get a massage, you might need to stretch more, sleep more, eat well. Um, that's a good telltale sign. I've been in that situation before where even a simple stride feels like it's it's hard and that's it's for me and based on my experience that's not a good sign leading into a peak race so those are the three questions i ask myself how do i feel after an easy day how do my legs feel in the morning uh, after wake getting out of bed and how do my legs feel doing four strides it should feel relaxed and you should feel confident and smooth. You shouldn't feel like you have to dig, okay? It's like that nice, smooth rhythm, okay? All right, I think that's it for today. I, I hope, I hopefully I'm not making it too complicated for all of you, but that freshness scale, one to 10, uh, just dialing in, and yes, question of the day, do you feel like you are dialed into how your overall body, but especially your legs feel leading into a peak race? Do, how do you determine if your legs are fresh or overworked, okay, um, and that you know, walk in the line. So that's the question of the day. I know it's very niche, very specific, but I'm just trying to instill and help all of you uh, have an insight, especially, okay, here's what's, since I didn't get to run Cleveland, I was unable to share some of these insights with all of you leading into that peak race because I had the injury. So now that I have Pike's Peak, it's like I can finally share some of my thoughts with all of you. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing here on the blog over the next week and just helping you hopefully dial into your racing leading into your big peak races, all right? And yes, if you wanna dive more into freshness versus fitness, I have a blog on the left for all of you that I made about six months ago. And then I'm gonna pull a Gray's Peak run from last summer, 2018 on the right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.